This is an example of an underexposed photo. The camera's meter was confused by the highlights on the left side of the face here, which left the face in deep shadow, so the details are hard to see. So we're going to have a look at seeing what we can do to process this photo to bring out some of the details and perhaps rescue it where we might otherwise abandon the photo. It's important to note that this kind of processing can only be done when the photo was taken in RAW, as JPEG doesn't have the dynamic range to bring the details out of the shadows or the highlights. So the first thing I'm going to do is give the photo a quick crop so that we can narrow down on the point of interest. And that leaves us with a, an underexposed area in the face and an overexposed area in the hair. So it's a very high contrast image. You can see in the histogram, most of the pixels are pushed over to the left. And the clipping indicator is showing us that there's large portions of the photo that are clipped in the shadows. And on the right hand side, you can see there's a very big peak of pixels in the highlights. And the clipping indicator shows that some of those parts of the photo are clipped as well. So we're going to have a job ahead of us to try and bring enough detail out of this photo. Now the first thing I'm going to do is try and correct the exposure on the part of the photo that is most important, that is the face. So we're just going to start playing with the brightness of the photo. Now I'll leave the exposure slider alone because exposure changes the value of all the pixels, including those in the highlights, and we don't want to push them any higher. So I'm going to try using the brightness slider first to try and push the majority of pixels over to the right and increase their brightness. Okay, that's starting to look a bit better. Now, we can see that the highlighted areas have also been pushed up, but we can leave them for now. And the face is not yet quite bright enough for how I would like, but I don't want to push too far with the brightness. We're already at the high end of the scale. So I'm going to try using a bit of fill light. Okay, that's starting to look a bit better. Now, it, even in the preview scale, it's starting to become apparent that we're bringing out some unwanted noise with the detail. We zoom into 100%, that noise is not too bad, but it's not very good. We'd still rather be without that noise if we can possibly avoid it. So let's have a look at the detail panel and see what we can do about noise reduction. So let's increase the luminance slider, which I think is doing a pretty good job. But we'll bring back some of the contrast for that, which will bring out some of the details. Now, I don't think I'll do any sharpening at this time. That's something I usually like to do last, or not at all if possible. So, we're getting a bit better. I still would like to see the face a little lighter, but I can't do too much about that by adjusting the whole photo, as we're going to increase the highlights. So, I might try and see what I can do about the highlights. Now, it's fairly clear that most of the overexposure is in the top left corner here. So, we can use a neutral density gradient filter for that. So we'll select the tool, we'll choose brightness, and we'll decrease that. And we'll have it fading from 100% here to zero about here. Now, as you can see, that's done a good job, but it's also increased the contrast. The very highlighted areas, the areas that the clipping warning showed were already clipped, haven't changed much. But the mid-tones have become darker, which has increased their contrast. So let's try compensating for that by reducing the contrast slider. Okay, there's not a lot we can really do there, unfortunately. It has additionally also increased the saturation of those colors. So let's compensate for that. Not quite so much. Try and keep it matching the other side of the face. Okay, now this isn't an ideal situation. We're obviously not going to be able to bring back detail in all of these pixels. But I think you can see that the neutral density filter effect has improved things somewhat. Now I'd still like to increase the brightness on the face a little bit. So I'm going to use a adjustment brush. And the adjustment brush is a good choice here because it'll be affecting only the parts of the photo that we wish to select. So we'll slide up the brightness on this case. And actually we'll make it fairly big and obvious so that we can see where we're painting. And we'll just paint over the area we want to affect. Now that's obviously way too bright, but we're doing this so that we can see where we're painting. Okay, so we'll bring that back down again to a more reasonable level. And I think that looks about right there. So if we'll turn this on and off just to have a look at the difference. And I think that's a big improvement and it's not too obviously faked. 
Now I just want to check one more time the noise because I'm starting to see in the preview here some noise being shown. Just one point to note, the preview isn't a direct reference to the actual photo. The preview is a JPEG file which is generated by Lightroom. The original RAW file is still there and may show more detail than the preview file would indicate. So as you can see there's a lot of red speckled color noise in this area and just general luminance noise as well. But if we zoom in, a lot of that, almost all of that goes away. So what we're looking at now is a one-to-one -one preview generated from the raw file again. But what we were looking at when we were zoomed out is an older preview JPEG generated at a smaller size. So the preview updates that JPEG. So the noise here isn't too bad. It's not ideal, but I think it's a lot better than it was. So I think that's made a big improvement to the photo's exposure. We can now see detail in the face, and even though we have clipping in the highlights, it's not too bad and not too distracting. Now, if I was to process this photo for output, I'd probably go a bit further in doing some uh, skin blemish correction and other tweaks, but because we're demonstrating how to correct for exposure problems, we'll just leave it at that. So if we have a look at how it was before our corrections, and again after, you can see there's a significant improvement there.